I was the attending on the clinical immunology service at UCLA in January of 1981. And in order to have a case to use for teaching purposes, I asked one of the trainees to go up on the hospital ward and find a patient with a disease that had immunologic features that we could use as a teaching case. Remarkably, he came back to tell me about a patient who had something that was unusual and undiagnosed, and that was our first patient with AIDS. His illness was very unusual. He was a 31-year-old gay white man who had lost about 30 pounds, uh, had skin infections from yeast, and developed this pneumonia called pneumocystis, which was extremely unusual, actually unheard of in previously healthy people. And uh, pneumocystis had been seen in patients who had received chemotherapy or radiation therapy or had severe existing immune deficiencies, but it was not something that you saw in previously healthy 30-year-old men. That alerted us to the fact that he probably had an underlying immune deficiency, and we looked at his case more closely. Sure, he was tall and thin and pale, and that was on the basis of anemia. He had evidence of a low white blood cell count and anemia, a low red blood cell count, indicating that his bone marrow wasn't functioning well. He had a yeast infection in his mouth, on the lining of his mouth, and one week after we saw him for the first time, he became very short of breath with rapid breathing and was readmitted to the hospital through the emergency room where his x-ray showed a very extensive pattern of pneumonia in both lungs. Well, within weeks of our seeing that first patient, the news of our having seen this unusual patient leaked into the medical community here in West Los Angeles. And very soon, I was referred three other patients, uh, all of whom were young men in that same age range, and all had mysterious, previously uh, unexplained illness. It did. It was very alarming. These people, these young men were critically ill and was something that was obviously serious, uh, possibly fatal, uh, and which we knew nothing about. And we had seen this cluster of patients. I'm often asked why HIV AIDS was first described here in Los Angeles by our group. And I think it was the fact that we had this, this cluster of patients and were able to call CDC and tell them that, hey, we've got four young men, previously healthy with uh, very serious illness and pneumocystis pneumonia.